I met Sharon and her partner Leone a couple of years ago through doTERRA and our mutual love of essential oils and discovered that Sharon, like me, has Hashimoto's and has had for a similar length of time. So we've talked from time to time about our mutual approaches to managing our thyroid health. We've talked about essential oils for thyroid support. And so I knew that I wanted to get Sharon onto the podcast to share her story. So please enjoy my conversation with Sharon. I know you're going to love it. She's got such a a kind, calm and thoughtful approach to managing her thyroid health and has lots of wisdom to share with us all. Welcome to Let's Talk Thyroid, where we explore different aspects of living a healthy thyroid lifestyle, positively and practically, to help you thrive and not just survive. Join me, Annabelle Bateman, your host, and Let's Talk Thyroid. Removing typically inflammatory foods can make a massive difference for our thyroid health, but it can also seem completely overwhelming and almost impossible. I mean, how do we do without gluten, grains, dairy, sugar, legumes? Oh my gosh. Well, I have taken the overwhelm out of it and packaged together all the steps to show you exactly how, and I guide you through it in a 30 day wellness challenge. So if you want some help to overhaul your diet and see just how good you could feel, check out my 30 day wellness challenge link in the show notes. Well, hello, Sharon, and welcome to the Let's Talk Thyroid podcast. Thanks, Annabelle. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, look, I'm really excited to be bringing members of our, I guess, our community uh, to sharing their stories with uh, with all of us because I know how much we can learn from each other. So I I want to thank you for being willing to share your story and open up about things that sometimes people aren't always comfortable talking about and, you know, just know that there'll be people that are listening that need to hear your story. Mm, thank you. Yes, I, I, I agree. It's really important to share our stories because thyroid conditions are so under um, estimated by the general population. It's not until you know somebody or you have a thyroid condition that you actually know how um, how it impacts your life in a significant way. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's certainly something that I'm hoping over time to do is just to raise that awareness of thyroid issues and for people who maybe haven't been diagnosed but think, oh, that sounds like me, just to have the trust their instincts to go off and get tested. So Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So before we dive deep into all of that, um, tell us just a little bit about Sharon, who, you know, where, whatever you want to tell us to help us get to know you a little bit before we dive into all the health stuff. Uh, sure. Well, I'm originally from Sydney. I have a background in performing arts. I had a dance school for 12 years and was a bit of a chronic overachiever, perhaps a workaholic. And um, then I performed in musical theatre for four years, moved to the Gold Coast and had a food business for, um, gosh, about 11 years. Oh, before that, I had an animal care business. <laughs> oh, wow. You've really As had you some diverse, uh, diverse careers. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It's um, the animal care business was something that I started when I was exhausted. When I yeah. was feeling exhausted, I had to leave the performing arts industry because of the energy it took. And I didn't know why I was exhausted all the time uh-huh. until I got tested. Yeah. And was that, a, were you? tested around that time or you just look back and see that the picture fit? I remember lying in bed thinking, woe is me, having no energy, hair falling out in the shower, having no idea what thyroid conditions were and just knowing, just not knowing what was wrong with me. And I just luckily ended up going to a GP and being tested, who tested for iron, obviously, and also thyroid. And it came back, I remember the appointment, it was 20 years ago, literally, and she said, you have um, Hashimoto's. And I said, okay, what's that? And she explained it. And the information that I got was, um, it's all good. You take these tablets and it completely sorts it. Uh, 
I was told exactly the same thing. And again, that was 20, about 23 years ago. It's a similar era. But what saddens me is that people, I hear people still being told that now. And isn't it in Australia that the first test is just TSH? Yeah, I talked about that. I actually had a chat recently with my doctor on the podcast and we talked a bit about that and the different tests and why, you know, why people often have trouble getting those antibody levels tested. Yeah, because, yes, often it is the TSH that's just tested and if that comes back in normal range, people are told nothing You're wrong. You're sick as every other sick person. Yeah, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with your thyroid. TSH yeah. is normal. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's a concern. So obviously it sounds like you were tested for the, the full autoimmune thing right at the beginning um, if you were uh, diagnosed immediately with Hashimoto's. I must have been. I had no, um, there wasn't a relationship with this doctor. It was literally the first time I went to see her. Wow. I guess I lucked out. Yeah, that was, <laughs> and, that was lucky. Yeah. And then she had the audacity to go and get pregnant and leave the practice. Oh, oh that <laughs> I know. Was, okay. So it wasn't until, um, so from then, from that time to when I found my holistic GP, basically I felt awful. Oh, mm. yeah. So you 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 were lucky in that you found a good doctor to diagnose, but then not then the ongoing treatment for a while. Yes. So around that time, you were tested. You were exhausted. You were coming out of the performing arts. So did mm. the animal care business was that less sort of stressful or less demanding? Like was that did that work well for you at that time? It did. Dogs are my happy place. Okay. And so <laughs> I thought it was basically a yahoo job <laughs> you know you walk in have fun and and it was that except um i think the overachiever came in and i was then invested in building the business and working long hours and and walking a lot in a day right a lot of dog walks um yeah so i sold that in, in a couple of years and then moved to the gold coast then i had the food business and that was once again High achieving. <laughs> and I yeah, think so you can see the- it. There's a theme, isn't there? Yeah. Do you see that as part of your thyroid story? I really do. And I think that um, it started back in high school when I got glandular fever mm-hmm. because I was um, dancing six days a week, seriously, at the sort of end of the qualifications. And in the HSC, which is year 12, for anybody that's not from New South Wales, and there were a few other extracurricular things that I was doing, so pushing myself. And I just remember breaking down and being exhausted one day. And then Mum took me to get tested, and I had uh, glandular fever. And I've only since found out how that relates to a lot of thyroid issues. And there is that they call that the infection connection. You know, there is. Yes, it can be one of the triggers. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's worthwhile having a doctor that can test for those things. Yeah, so that that overachieving, hardworking personality, have you been able to work out how to manage that part of your personality so that it doesn't impact on your health as it has in the past? Uh, yes, I think partly because uh, that particular doctor I talked about that originally diagnosed me assumed that I've kind of switched, flipped from hyperthyroid because of that profile to hypo and apparently that happens. Um, And so I think over time when you come to the acceptance of having something going on in your body, because I've fought it for a long time, um, you become a little bit more compassionate about your limitations and I guess just with age, like you say, a bit of wisdom comes hopefully and you learn to know the signs yeah. of when you need to pull back or stop or even just take time out. Yeah. So what are those signs for you now? Mental fatigue, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So that brain fog that comes with thyroid issues yeah. um, it come up for me when I've pushed too hard. Also stress and anxiety. Uh, right now, I my go-to is some essential oils. And whenever I'm feeling, actually, I start the day, 
<laughs> prophylactically <laughs> put oils on yeah. <laughs> that are grounding and centering and yeah. I I just find that um really helpful especially when you're managing kids getting them out the door and wanting to get to work and yeah so is your tell me about that morning routine then in terms of getting settled from the beginning tell us what you do well I live with a naturopath so there's a lot of supplements and <laughs> I did think I, we do. okay we're gonna to have to talk about this secret weapon of yours because we don't all get to live with a naturopath <laughs> exactly <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know me my partner's a naturopath and a good yep. one yep. um and so I've been able I've been lucky to try a myriad of supplements and also together with the holistic GP, it's just a great team. Absolutely. And I think it's so important to have a team around you that you can flip from one to the other and sort of rotate around your support system. Yeah. Um, but in the morning, um, a, a, an everyday thing is that on my feet I put some uh, balance, which is a grounding blend. And depending how I feel, I might put a Roma touch if I'm a bit achy. Oh, uh, achy. So autoimmune diseases as you know sometimes feed into other autoimmune diseases so my doctor um basically told me i had fibromyalgia okay which i'm still in denial of because i'm going with bruce lipton biology of belief right oh okay yep i know fine line between acceptance and yeah yeah Yeah. i don't know how we work all that out it's a constant i know (laughs) you know the one thing um my partner has a friend who also uses um, similar supplements and oils and she suggested uh, a supplement range. It's a three-bottle range that you use each month and because I was literally going to bed crying from the aching of the fibromyalgia. And copaiba oil really helped that with pain. Okay. But... Um, this lady suggested uh, to try this supplement range and I was a little bit, you know, bar humbug. Anyway, I tried it and the first day, the first night I cried because there was no difference. There was no difference. It's amazing how we just want that instant response instant. though, isn't it? After <laughs> one <silver> day. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It took me 40 years to get to this point, but in one I day know. I want it all solved. Yeah. It's totally reasonable. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> But nothing so overachieving the, in that, is there? No. <laughs> we want, we want everything to overachieve with us. <laughs> thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the second night I remember laying there and I noticed that I wasn't hurting all over. Oh, wow. Night two. Second night. Yeah, so wow. I cried because I wasn't hurting. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I was so relieved because... On top of the Hashimoto's and then, and I have some arthritis, Mm -hmm. so there's uh, local pain around there, but this was an all-over pain that was debilitating. Wow. So those two things, the Copaiba and and those supplements, have really literally changed my life. Wow. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, where do you go from there? That's incredible. Yeah. It's it's such a blessing. And, And quite often I'll, I'll, forget to take you know sometimes you take supplements and you just forget oh, because yeah. life gets busy yeah. yeah and over the holidays the school holidays um that have just been I forgot for about three days and one night I was like why am I aching so much what have I done have I walked here have I nope, forgot to take the supplement range <laughs> interesting isn't it we're just within those few days and then you realize sometimes when you're not taking something what a difference that it was take was making Absolutely. And and I had tried, as I said, other things before because, you know, I had a naturopath on tap and um, we were ordering f- um, wholesale from different companies and trying everything, the gut repair, the, the adrenal um, herbs, the liver support, everything, and nothing's made such a difference as this. It's what works for you, isn't it? Absolutely. And, look, yeah, yeah we're all so different, aren't we, and we've all got mm. that different combination of triggers and life experience and lifestyle that is going to impact us all yeah, slightly differently. And as you say, I think we're probably similar. We've certainly have been dealing with this for a similar length of time. So you do try everything. You know, there's Absolutely. a lot of investigation and trial and error. And I'm just going to take a step back. 
So back from when you were diagnosed 20 years ago, you, you mentioned it was the, the fatigue, you know, was fatigue the main symptom for you, like that exhaustion or the, oh, the hair? You said you mentioned your hair was falling out. Do you yes. remember back then were there other things that alerted you that something was wrong? Mm, good question. There was definitely low mood. Okay. And just everything had its shine taken off. Hmm. And it was almost if I had have gone to another GP, I could have been diagnosed with depression. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think I'm so blessed that I landed with a GP that knew about thyroid. And I think for, for anyone that's feeling any symptoms associated with thyroid, it's really important to, to know that that doctor knows what they're talking about. I'm curious, are, are those key symptoms that, you know, I guess were the telltale signs back then, have they been the similar um, symptoms, I suppose, that you've experienced over the 20 years or have there been other things that have come up for you at different times? Mm. So the low mood changed within a few weeks. Yeah, of being on the medication. Great. Yeah, yeah. And the medication did help generally. I, my hair stopped falling out at the rate that it was. I still lose probably more hair than than average person. However, luckily I've got some hair to start with. <laughs> um, but I think the weight gain, which is a, a very common thing with Hashimoto's, low thyroid, that was a challenge for a long time, especially because I was quite active and, you know, in the performing arts area. Yeah. yeah. So that was a challenge. And I think that, Education, and a bit like what you're doing now, education for me was key because when I understood that um, reverse T3 actually becomes more prolific in the body when you reduce your calorie intake, therefore your nutrient intake, (laughs) so that then tells the body not to produce the, the useful T3 which is what we use for metabolism. So everything starts to shut down in the body. So I'm sure other people um, listening have had an experience where they've maybe gone on a keto diet or low-carb diet and for the first week everything's great and then suddenly a crash in energy and all you do or you crave is carbohydrates for quick energy. And I think if there's a thyroid uh, issue going on, that's probably more pronounced because we need, we're already low in thyroid. <laughs> and if we, if we make the body produce less, um, then we're in trouble. So weight gain was, was another factor of dealing with. Is there, has there been anything that you've found has helped you either lose weight or maintain weight or not gain weight <laughs> or just how your approach to eating and exercise love to know what your approach is Mm. well um currently because of the arthritis i can't exercise but exercise was a mind body um thing for me i I used to get on the bike stationary bike for 20 to 30 minutes and that set my mind in the right place for the day and it set my body in the right place for the day so if you're capable of having that morning exercise that worked for me Um, uh, meditation lowering your stress So is meditation a key way you do that? Uh, Yes, not in the cross your legs guru style meditation, but I like visualisations that sort of take my mind away from myself. So like more like a guided meditation? Yeah. Yeah. I can't do non-guided meditation. My brain (laughs) doesn't seem capable of doing that. (laughs) I often talk about um I need active what I call active meditation so even like I like to do jigsaw puzzles or coloring in or you know those things because I feel like I'm doing something but it stops my mind from thinking absolutely it's an escape so exercise in the morning if you can doing some mindfulness meditation yeah stress management definitely Yeah. yeah and through the years you were talking of um I think my turning point was seeing the holistic GP because from the wider blood test she did, she saw that I wasn't converting T4 to T3 effectively. So T4 is the first hormone 
that we make and T3 is the active useful one. And so I started taking um, T3 as well as T4. And did that make that made a big difference? Huge difference. Immediately wow. had more energy. A bit like if anyone's ever been low on, low on iron and they've had an iron supplement that worked. It just okay. it's like a yeah instantly yeah, instantly yeah. Mm-hmm. And do you still take that? Do you still take some yeah. T3 as so well? I'm taking T4 yeah. and T3. Uh, she did try me on some mm-hmm. DHEA, which sort of is linked to the adrenal exhaustion. But for me, I didn't find that made a difference to me. That's where we're all so different, isn't it? And I was ha- when I was talking to my doctor, I you know, was asking her about the different kinds of medication because uh, I know in the in the Facebook community, people want to know about that, and often traditionally trained doctors aren't always fully aware of all the different options or don't have the confidence to prescribe or whatever. Um, and whilst in the years that I've been seeing my doctor, I've tried, I've tried the slow release T3. I've tried, I'm pretty sure I've tried the natural desiccated thyroid. I've, you know, I've, I've tried all sorts of combinations and I'm back to just the straight aroxine, but I've appreciated being able to try it. And, and I haven't, yeah, just sometimes I guess it's that trial and error. What, what really makes a big difference for you didn't so much for me, but that's okay, you know, could try. Absolutely. And I, I did try yeah. Armal, which is the natural T3, T4 yeah. desiccated. Okay. Uh, yep. It didn't work for me at all. I actually felt worse. But having a good doctor that you can try these different things whilst under medical supervision and that are monitoring your your thyroid levels. Yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Makes a big difference. Yeah. So seeing the holistic doctor, what else did that do for you? Like what else did they recommend for you? No gluten, no dairy. So I thought my life was over. And, and were you compliant? Were you a compliant I patient? I was a very okay. compliant patient and then I wasn't. So I was compliant for about three months and then I decided in one day that I'd try to eat gluten and dairy at once. Oh, and how did that go Didn't down work for you? Out well. <laughs> <laughs> All night. <laughs> um, oh, no. <laughs> so it was a good convincer, though. <laughs> well, that's probably good. Probably, in retrospect, a helpful experiment. Yeah. So now I don't even – it's a bit like if somebody – all I can equate it to is, is if there's anyone listening that's a non-smoker and someone said, would you like a cigarette? That's how I feel about gluten and dairy now because it just doesn't work for my body. Is it just the gluten and dairy or have you found anything else that doesn't agree with you? Or is... mm. So grains are not great. So I'm, I'm basically paleo and I'm, I'm experimenting with different things, autoimmune paleo, so taking eggs out for a while and taking nuts out for a while because I don't really want to limit options for food. <laughs> yeah, but if it's going to make a difference to how I feel, sure. Um, yeah. 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 It's tricky, isn't it? Trying to take things out and yet still maintain that gut biodiversity yeah. and, and not feeling like you live in this little prison where you can't eat out or go to someone's house or, you know, which causes stress. So it's that, again, that fine balance. It is. Feeling good, but not feeling stressed about the way you got to feel exactly, good. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And for me, the gluten and dairy free is, is a no option. I know some people, um, can have little bits and that works for them. But for me, and it might be for other people also, if I get a whiff of dairy, my body reacts. It's almost like I equate it to a vaccination kind of response. The immune system just blows up and it it sniffs a little bit of casein. I think sometimes, I don't know what you think, but it's almost easier when you have a blanket rule about I don't eat gluten, I don't eat dairy or whatever it is that, because then you don't have to debate every time. Absolutely. Oh, well, I have that cake. Oh, well, it's got gluten and dairy. I guess I'm not having that cake. Exactly. <laughs> you don't even have to debate that. No, I, I, I just don't consider it anymore. It's, it's a new normal, and that's what this doctor explained to me, which was great because I knew there was going to be a journey of difficulty in, in changing because you eat one way for however many years and then suddenly there's a big change. And probably... And I, you know, this is no scientific backing behind this, but I think I probably went too hard with gluten and dairy in my 20s. Like that was, you know, your first day on your own, you don't really know how to cook. 
not much protein, lots of carbs, lots of dairy. It's delicious. Why not? <laughs> well, I, I think about what I ate at, when I was at uni and I, I was diagnosed in my last year of uni, like at the end of the last year of uni. Right. But I think of the number of days that I would spend in the cafeteria trying to study drinking a dairy cappuccino with a humongous muffin. Yeah, staple morning tea. If anyone is told that to try going gluten and dairy free, it's it, they probably will have a similar reaction to me. It's like, well, then my life's over and what will I eat is usually the next question. And so trust me, you do get over the hurdle and, and there are just are so many more options. Once you know them, there's so many more options and it just becomes, has it become a new normal for you? Totally. And I look, I think for me, I would say I describe my diet as paleo-ish and I've, I've certainly had periods of time when I've been very strict paleo where I've, I have done the autoimmune protocol, not for a long time, but for a little bit different points. I've cut out eggs. I've cut out, I remember at one point I cut out chicken because I was trying to work out what was, I was still eating something that was irritating me on a regular basis. And I worked out through my naturopath who does a lot of kinesiology, that chicken wasn't working. I cut that out only for a couple of weeks, but so now I would say paleo-ish. I have noticed in the last, maybe it's sort of over winter, um, the, the extra grains have snuck in a bit more. So I'm aware of that and I'm just sort of monitoring it and I think I'll probably have a time in the not too distant future where I cut back on that. But for me, it's absolutely no gluten. Yeah. And I think it does change over time as your gut repairs. I'm talking years. Like I've now been gluten-free for about seven years. So, it, but it's taken time, you know, a lot of time. So I think I probably can tolerate a little bit more of some of those other things now than I could Absolutely. have and three years ago. I had, I um, uh, hope no one's having lunch, but the stool test from the holistic GP and that brought back a lot of um, imbalances which we worked on. And so that's good to know. And that's not something that your average mainstream GP may test for uh, unless you push. Um, and then it's about how they read the blood tests and how they read the the results of tests. It's more naturopathic and holistic about the relationships of everything rather than just you're in the band. So, um, yeah, that was another thing that the holistic GP helped me with was the food journey, um, but also toxins. So, you know, heavy metals, what you're eating, pesticides, uh, trying to avoid them, hard hard to avoid them. Um, but also in I think my biggest thing was personal products like beauty care products and perfumes. I just don't go there anymore. So is that something you've re- you've replaced things over time or did you just go toxins, no, throw everything out? How did you approach the toxin-free living reducing toxins because it's hard you can't really be toxin free but how, how did you approach that with beauty products I used everything up I'm, I'm a non-waster so I used everything up in my cupboard and then replaced whatever I'd used with something more natural and same with cleaning products I just and what I noticed was because my skin used to be quite dry even though I'd used a lot of moisturizer commercial moisturizer but now I'm noticing my skin is quite moist it's in a lot better condition yeah well like I said to you before we started recording you look you're looking beautiful you're looking shiny and fresh and you know healthy like you're glowing that's the word (laughs) like you're looking glowing so all of that and especially in winter with often people shucks Hashimoto's dry (laughs) skin so it's obviously working for you it is yeah and it's a little I think it's the little tweaks we make along the way like you say that that work for us that all become a cumulative effect of us feeling better and just experiencing life in a more relaxed and happy way yeah I've been learning even just recently I guess that the toxins have a bigger impact on our thyroid health than I had given credit to Like I've certainly done what you've done and many years ago my doctor too said start switching out your your personal care products, those sorts of things. So I did very, sounds like a very similar approach years ago now 
and way before I started using, you know, the essential oils and things like that. But I just, maybe that's where I was being more of a compliant patient rather than really understanding why, but increasingly, and I've, I've recently did a course all about thyroid health and so a lot of the triggers and yeah, the toxins definitely played in there much more significantly. And Dr. Karatsian, who was running it, said, really, we should be as passionately against plastics as we are against gluten. And I thought, oh, wow, okay, right. Well, mm. that's another level of um, yeah. removal in our household. Not that we've got heaps, but we still do have plastic Tupperware. Yeah, exactly. We still do. There's certainly some th- more things that could be replaced. I think my turning point with toxins in, in what you're talking about, beauty products and products we use, was when I found out about ag- obesogens. Oh, right. Tell us about that. <laughs> and the phthalates and um, all the things that are within beauty products and plastics, so the molecules in there, that actually slow down our metabolism and stop fat. Gosh, for those of us, we have enough trouble. I can't Quick. be good. I better, we better find some studies. I, I have heard that before, but again, probably not as tuned into that, but yeah, holy moly. Yeah. So that, that was, that was the no brainer for me. Cause I, I was, yes, okay. We shouldn't be toxic and blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah. when I found out it <laughs> it's actually, amazing how really our vanity is. Oh, often okay, is the, <laughs> I'm not saying you're bad. I don't mean that bad, but I would be like, yeah, right. Done. Yeah. That's it too. Yep. You're done. I'm done now. I'm going to research obesogens. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so we've covered a really nice spectrum of that, <laughs> uh, both, yeah. you know, the medication, which, I, you know, I think is is imp- important. to If you need it, it's important, and all of those nice holistic measures. Tell me, you know, with your secret mm. weapon naturopath partner, um, have, what have you... What what can you can you share some of <laughs> yeah. your secret weapon with us? Like what what's what advice have you got from um, your in house naturopath that we could all benefit <laughs> from? If, if there's something that we haven't already covered, we I mean it might have already woven in. Uh, her name is Leone, and Leonie's very good at reminding me to stop when I don't remind myself. Um, coming from that holistic view that she has, and um, I think the also the reminder to check in and align my decisions with because just as an aside, if you if you were to believe in a metaphysical world, there's um, a bit of an thyroid equates to lack of having a voice. Mm-hmm. There's a belief yeah. that there's that. Yep. So whether that resonates with anybody or not, and I was definitely in that situation for quite a lot of years. Okay. And so I think um, the reminder from her holistic um, sense to check in with myself before I make a decision that it aligns and honours myself, mm. not in a selfish way but in a self-care way, because uh, Hashimoto's people and low thyroid people, personality-wise, we tend to do everything for everybody else. We do. It's just a profile. I don't know yep. why, yep. but we're very much the carers and the nurturers and forget about ourselves. Yeah. So that, that's that been my good reminder. And the last thing um, I think is the... Our experience with essential oils has been profound in two ways. Once with her digestion, that um, secondary, I've got my blood test results um, for when I started taking some high antioxidant oils um, in a capsule that's called Yarrow Pom and also Capiva. And so my uh, peroxidase, the antibodies, went from 438. And then the next test after using that, so that's pretty high, went to 74. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Sharon, that's massive drop. In what time frame? I had changed. In what time frame? Um, so a year. Okay. And I'd changed nothing but taking that 
combination. Yeah, wow. Because you'd already been, you'd yeah. already implemented the, oh, the diet lifestyle, all yeah. of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Isn't that, I think that's a lovely, um, you know, just in getting regular blood tests, you can see if what you're doing is working or not working. To me, that, maybe that's the overachiever in me is that, yeah. and I said this <laughs> when I was talking to Ellen, my doctor, I said, I don't know if it's just me, but I like, or it's the control thing I like to see. And she said, well, no, when you're putting so much effort into your own health, it actually yep. is good to get that feedback. That's a, that's Absolutely. legitimate. Oh, and it's obviously medically advisable to be checked regularly. But she said, actually, yeah, when you're yeah. making those changes, you want to see if they're working or not. Yes, and it helps guide you because if something isn't working, if there are, are no changes, then you know you've got to try something different yep. or stop doing. You know, there's there's some mix-up. It's, it is an experiment. We're a living experiment. The other um, antibody is uh, thyroglobulin, and that went from 25 to 4. Wow. Yeah, so significant change. And, and with that change in antibody profile in the blood test came less symptoms, of course. Yeah, well, less so, autoimmunity. Um, I mean, you've got less exactly. autoimmune issues going Literally. on in your body. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm super grateful for the power of that combination of oils. Yeah. And um, I, So that I, was yarrow, palm and copaiba. Uh, Yarrow palm and copaiba, yeah. I mean, I think she throws a, you know, maybe a a, um, a citrus or something okay. in there as well. She has her own little formula, but they're the two. They're the keys. That, um, yeah, a constant. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I know. I think we've had this. We, I've had this conversation with you in the past, but I've never. I haven't actually done that. So maybe I'll. That will be my next experiment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I know, aren't we lucky to live in a world or a time where we've got access to great medical care and great holistic care and top quality plant medicine and supplements and herbs and food and to have that choice. Important. And yep. it doesn't have to be either or, it can be both. Absolutely. That's why it's called complementary medicine. Yeah. Um, but is there anything that you've tried in the past that really hasn't worked for you not that I can recall because if it didn't work I probably just left it in the dust and moved on yeah okay yeah and if you could um go back to your 20 year ago self is there any (laughs) tips that you would give yourself as to how Mm. anything you would do differently or to be aware of or what would you say to yourself yes diet and lifestyle Number one, so be kind to your gut and your mind and emotions. Um, find a good holistic GP slash naturopath. Yeah. <laughs> and educate yourself in what's happening in your own body. Yeah. I think those three things. Yeah, they're pretty powerful, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. one more question, just picking up on that. How have you educated yourself? From healing so much from having the holistic GP, I actually got inspired. I started studying naturopathy myself ah. for a couple of years. Yep. Okay. I didn't finish, but I moved to nutrition. Yep. And let's just say that's on hold. Um, <laughs> so I've, I've done some tertiary study mm. in that area. Um, but that, it just... I think when you're struggling with something yourself, it lights a fire for curiosity. And, and for me, understanding things brings me peace. Yeah. It's it's okay if I don't like it, but if I understand it, then I know what I'm dealing with. Yeah. And, um, and I think just listening to experts in the world, you know, whether it's Dr. Tom O'Brien or, um, Bruce Lipton, like I talked about, different experts in different areas that offer, it, you end up with a 360 view of your situation rather than just one linear view from one source of information. And, yes, I can geek out on PubMed studies and things like that, but I much prefer to look at a video and hear somebody talking or, you know, listen to an interview. And there's quite often just one piece of gold that comes from it yeah um and it's just a journey it's just a journey for me of education I love learning things generally let alone how I can make myself feel better 
is that, well, is there anything else that you think that our listeners might benefit from? You're not crazy. Mm. It's highly unlikely that you are. It's, um, it's the case of finding the type of GP that can look for, look past signs and symptoms and find causes mm. and understands how one symptom might be treated by just treating that symptom or it could be a sign of a, of a bigger picture. For instance, um, I'm not wanting to diversify too far, but carpal tunnel syndrome, that's a sign of Hashimoto's. Okay, so somebody might go for an operation for carpal tunnel syndrome, but it's about, for Hashimoto's, it's about um, peripheral circulation. So another thing is ginkgo biloba. So if, you know, there's something going on that your nails are breaking or you've got dry skin or there's something that you can put together a, a few symptoms of thyroid and, and I don't know about hyper, I only know about hyper, um, then it's worth speaking and writing them down to somebody who knows what they're talking about and getting the tests that will show the true source of what's happening. So don't take no for an answer. This podcast has been proudly supported by, well, me. I am fully backing my podcast and getting the Let's Talk Thyroid message out to you. If you are interested in purchasing essential oils, that is one of the ways that uh, you can support me and I can support you and essential oils can support your overall thyroid health and wellness. So if that's something that you would like to add to your health and wellness toolkit uh, of resources that you can access to support you in a number of different ways, send me a message. I'd love to help you find what suits your individual needs and budget. Or you can head to AnnabelleBateman.com and follow the links there to essential oils. But think digestive support, stress management, reducing your toxic load, all sorts of ways that we can use essential oils as part of our overall lifestyle approach to managing health and wellness. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Let's Talk Thyroid. I would love it if you would subscribe to the podcast and share it with others that you know with thyroid problems. Let's get the message out there. If you'd like to connect with me further, the best place to do that is via my website, AnnabelleBateman.com. From there, you'll be able to join my Facebook group, book a strategy session with me, download my freebie, um, and access any show notes for this episode. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye. The information presented and discussed in this podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease and should not be used as a substitute for proper advice from a qualified professional.